I've just received this box from Hargrove Cycles. I'm gonna take a look inside and see what's in it. Let's open it up. So first off, right here, we've got a fabric magic saddle. So this is actually gonna end up on my calendar, but we're gonna do that in another video. So we'll just put that to the side for now. And then the big thing is these. One, two. And then we've got some spare 24 inch tubes. So these are Magura brakes. And these are really interesting. In the last video, I upgraded the brakes on my trials bike by increasing the size of the rotor. Today, we're gonna to be upgrading the brakes by putting a four pot disc brake on it. Let's go. These are the Magura MT7 disc brakes. So the MT7 is Magura's top of the line uh, kind of four pot brake. Uh, they do do a more expensive version, which is the Danny McCaskill one, and that's got a slightly different lever blade. But these are the normal, well, the MT7 Pros. And would you look at that? How beautiful does that look? So I think it's time to get these fitted onto the bike. We have the Magura MT7s all fitted now. And I must say, just from squeezing them now, they feel super, super firm. You can tell straight away that when you pull it, you've got a bit of travel, but instead of that travel being useless travel, like it would be on a Shimano with a servo wave technology, the, on the Magura, you can feel the modulation happen during that travel. So they are really nice, but they ramp up really, really quickly as well. So I can ro I'm rolling along right now, pulling, 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 and then ramps up and I'm stopped, which is gonna be absolutely fantastic for trials. So obviously I need to get the brakes dialed in. So set up for my fingers, set up for my hands. That's gonna take a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of time to make, make them set up perfect for me. But the brakes do feel fantastic and the hold does feel like a massive upgrade from the SLX that were originally on this bike and I would go as far as to say that these already feel better than the Shimano Zs that are on my Cannondale Jekyll. I think it's time we went for a little ride just to see how good they are. Let's start off with a nice simple brake thing with a uh, Endo 180. Okay. Uh, what about a front hop? Ooh. So my SLX brake would have slipped at that point. And uh, what about a back hop? Oh wow. Whilst they're amazing, there's a little thing that I've noticed that's starting to bug me about them. So when I pull the brake really hard, whether that's in a back hop or when I'm trying to do a front hop, I can feel a little bit of movement in the pads and that's known as pad rock. So I was speaking to my friend Jordan earlier. I'll just tag him somewhere on the screen, his Instagram somewhere, whether it's there, there or there. Make sure you go follow him because he's a really, really good street trials rider. So he told me that all I need to do to solve that problem is put some duct tape on my pads, which sounds ridiculous, but I suppose we'll we'll see how it works. First step is gonna be removing the pads from the brakes. Now on the Magura MT7 brakes, there are actually two individual pads per a piston. So there's actually gonna be four pads total. So we're gonna start by removing these two ret pad retaining bolts, and these are undone using a T25 when it comes to removing the pads, it's quite hard to fit your fingers in to try and pull them out. So a good tip is to use a very small Allen key and fish them out by putting the Allen key through this little hole. Try not to touch the surface of the pads using your fingers because that will possibly contaminate your pads. It's just like fishing. we've got all four pads out of the caliper what we're going to need is we're going to need some duct tape and a razor blade now we've got all our duct taped up pads it's time to refit them into the caliper we're going to try and slide them in without having to move the rear wheel because that's a bit of a faff with all the chain tensioners there we go so we might have to wiggle this as we go in to get it to line up with the two holes and We'll do this up using 
again the T25. A lot of people try and use the Allen key for these so a T25 bolt or a Torx bolt in general does require the correct tool. If you do try and use the wrong size one you will end up rounding it off uh, so if you don't have the correct tool you shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be doing it really because you will oh, I've pushed this one in too far you will just end up ruining your bolts and I do see it quite a lot people using the wrong wrong size bolt well not wrong size bolt wrong size tool to do up a bolt but yeah if you've got the right size one please use it because it will save you time in the long run. So all pads are now installed and I think it's time to see if we've got any pad rock. So we've done the duct tape on the brake pads modification. So let's see if we've got any knock. That's way better than before. So before I was feeling a little bit twitchy on the front wheel with the brake, I was feeling a little bit of play. Now that play is completely gone. Yeah, that's brilliant. The whole brake feels a bit more responsive now as well. So there's no momentarily lag whilst the pads move. It's straight onto the brakes, which is fantastic. So if you're having problems with pad knock, I can't recommend sticking some duct tape on the metal backing more, more than enough. I mean, it seems to be doing a really good job. Time will tell to see how long it lasts, but I expect that by the time the duct tape is worn out, I'll probably need new pads anyway. So yeah, big th thanks to Jordan for giving me this tip and I'll link his Instagram somewhere on the page. So if you want to go follow someone who's a pretty good rider, uh, make sure you do.